My name's Jan Martel. I'm a Canadian writer. I've published uh, four works of fiction, a collection of short stories and three novels, and one collection of letters to the Prime Minister of Canada. Well, nothing that I would reveal that's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, trivial stuff. I don't like cooking. Um, um, I'm not the big animal lover that people might think. Must have been, well, gosh, must have been grade one or two at most when you start to learn how to write. Yeah. I remember, first of all, being interested in language. And I remember the day that our teacher taught us that the word in and the word to could be combined into one word, into. And I remember saying, wow, that is so cool. One thing I love about English is extraordinary vocabulary. It is by far the language with the greatest vocabulary. And that's nice. It's nice to lose yourself in that great museum, that great library that is English vocabulary. The texture of English, <clears throat> people who speak English don't know it. You know, the texture of Swedish to people who speak Swedish, they don't know it. To us who don't speak Swedish, it sounds like hurti furti, hurti furti. You know, see a uh, Ingvar Bergman movie, they all are going hurti furti, hurti furti. It sounds really funny. You say that to the Swedes, they sort of laugh because that doesn't sound like that to them. So, but it's interesting when you speak, I happen to speak just three languages, but English, French, and Spanish. Yeah, each has its own characteristic, its own, maybe its strengths and weaknesses. I became an artist to start with out of a sense of, unease with the world. So I remember the very first time I wrote something, I was 19 years old and I wrote a, a play. It was a very bad play. But why did I write it? Because I was in second year of university and I didn't belong there. It strikes me as someone who was completely, completely happy will not become an artist. Good art doesn't actually come from good people. Uh, art isn't immoral, but I would, I would argue that it's largely amoral. You know, um, uh, uh, Life, uh, art is about what life is, not what life should be. In this latest novel, Beatrice and Virgil, I'm interested in looking at the Holocaust. I'm not Jewish, and I have no family history linked to the Holocaust. I'm neither German, nor Hungarian, nor Polish, nor any Eastern European descent. It's a completely external drama to me. Nonetheless, I'm interested in it. You know, art understands through the imagination, and that kind of understanding is necessary for anything, but specifically for the Holocaust, which has tend to scare away Imagine the imaginative art, especially in literature. You know, Beatrice and Virgil to me is not addressed to, to survivors or, 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 or to victimizers. Uh, uh, um, it's more to the other people who just want to say, well, what do we do with this, tra this you know, appalling event of, of unparalleled proportion? What do we do with it? I think my greatest failure uh, being things like lack of empathy, lack of curiosity, judging a book by its cover. Um, Judging is a way of defending yourself. You know, you judge and therefore you push away, um, which sometimes is necessary. Um, it's a shorthand to survival sometimes. Until I wrote Life of Pi, I was scathing about religion. I judged people of faith as uh, basically being ill-educated, not very intelligent, childish somehow. Religion was for children. Um, so that's one area of judgment where working a book enlightened me. I'm a recent parent. My lovely Theo is eight months old. Um, he swallows up time. Um, that's what babies do. They swallow, they eat time. The danger of art, if you're a creator of it, is it tends to increase egocentricity, your egoism. What's wonderful about a child is it pulls you out of that. You know, this little child, in the most banal ways, he needs to have his diaper changed. Um, he needs to be fed. He needs to be entertained. It demands you to rise up to that occasion. And you, ha you, you do anyway, because they are so insanely cute. I went to Ottawa for the 50th anniversary of the Canada Council for the Arts and it was a lamentable celebration, uh, uh, essentially celebrated under the indifferent eyes of the political class. So I came back to Saskatoon and I said, well, what can I do? How can I say that art is not just entertainment? Um, and I thought, well, I'll send a book to the Prime Minister every two weeks uh, with a letter explaining why I chose that book. I've sent the man, right now, the, the, there are 78 books in Ottawa that I've sent him. 78 books haven't received a single reply. A couple of lectures ago, he was asked what his favorite book was. He answered the Guinness Book of World Records. You want a comparison? About a month ago in Saskatoon, I got a letter from President Barack Obama. I got a, a letter from the White House saying, you know, a little note saying he and his daughter had finished reading Life of Pi and they loved it and they wanted to thank me for it. Um, here's a man who's President of the United States. He's going to be busy and yet he still has time to read and to write to a writer who's not even of his own country. 
Um, and look at the difference. Look at the, you know, the vision of Barack Obama. His language has been inspirational, not just for the United States, for the whole world. Uh, um, I see in, in Stephen Harper a vision and imagination that is far less developed. And because I'm a writer, I in part ascribe that to his lack of reading. It could be innate. Maybe he's been reading Proust his whole life and he's just the way he is. I don't know. Uh, what keeps me writing is the pleasure of being in language. The pleasure, it's not the book itself, it's the creation, creating of a story in my mind. That little cathedral that I'm building in my mind. Building that brick by brick is what keeps me going. It's public reception is something else. Now this is, is this live to tape or you're going to edit this? Of course you're going to edit this. In Costa Rica where I lived as a child or in Spain where I was born I lived again uh, uh, later on. Um, losing a bit of speed here on this question. Oh sorry, am I moving around too much? I f I'm fidgety.